Hi, my name's Andy, and this is a video about how to use Git. Um, just the basics for now. So, if you've seen uh, my previous video, uh, hopefully I made um, the case for why you would want to use Git. Um, this is just the practical things of what you do to use it. Um, and I'm only going to cover, in this video, I'm only going to cover um, yeah, working on your own, working on a small project on your own, and then uh, that's the simplest way to start, and then we'll move on from there to uh, uh, working with other repositories and branches and all things like that in later videos. So, uh, first we're going to talk about how, how to actually start a new project, uh, then what happens when you make some changes, then when you want to go back and look what happened, you can examine the history, uh, and then one of the cool features of Git, just to whet your appetite of uh, why it's worth learning all this stuff, uh, interrupting yourself to do something else. Brilliant feature. Okay, so before I start, I should say um, this video is quite heavily inspired by um, uh, a tutorial, um, web tutorial written by Joel Spolsky called HG Init. Uh, excellent tutorial. Uh, explains uh, how Mercurial works, and Mercurial, for the purposes of this video and lots of other videos, works exactly the same way as Git. Underneath there are some differences, but um, for the purpose of what we're talking about, it's exactly the same. So do have a look at that. Uh, it's excellent. Okay, so let's start off um, by creating a new project. Um, uh, for all of this video, we're going to be um, typing commands into a command console. Um, if you get git for Windows, um, it comes with something called git bash, which is a, a terminal that you can type commands into. Um, and I suggest working with git in that way. I don't suggest using a UI until you understand what's going on. Uh, I just find it simpler and uh, more convenient to work with. Um, so at the top you can see what we're typing uh, in the black window. So what we're doing is we're making a directory called sayings, and that's where our, our code is going to live. And then we're changing into that directory with with the cd command, uh, and then we're editing a file called northern.txt. I'm choosing to edit a file with uh, an editor called vim, but you can use uh, any editor you like. And then below that you can see what we're typing in uh, as the contents of that file. Uh, so we're creating a file called northern.txt and we're putting some uh, cliched northern sayings um, into that file and then saving it. So now we've got some code. We want to start tracking our code in git. So what we type is git init. So we're inside the sayings directory. We type git init. This assumes you've got git installed and you're, you're either in git bash or you're in a Linux terminal where git is on the path. So to run all of your commands in git, you just type git and then something else. So in this case, we type git init, which means initialize as in get started. And git tells you what it's done. What it what it does is it makes a little directory called dot .git inside this directory. And that's where all of the information that git needs is going to live. So even if you have subdirectories inside sayings that you're tracking and things like that, um, uh, git won't make any more directories. It only makes that one dot .git directory in there. Uh, so it's put some stuff in there which we won't, we don't need to look at, and then we can we can type this command that we type a lot uh, to find out to ask Git what's going on. So the command that we use to say to Git what's going on is Git status. What it tells you is some stuff that we don't need to look at um, about the um, the branch we're on. And now as we go further down, there's a section that says untracked files, um, and under untracked files there is one file called northern.txt. So what it means by untracked is this is a file that um, Git doesn't know anything about, um, that it's not yet tracking, but it's noticed that it's there. So Git in the grand tradition of uh, um, source control systems like CVS and Subversion uh, does notice when you've added new files, um, even if it knows nothing about them. Some source control systems don't notice that and you have to remember, which I find very hard to work with. Okay, so um, now that we've um, asked Git what's going on, um, and we've remembered that we've added this file and we haven't told Git about it, we'll do what we do to tell Git about it. So what we do to tell Git about it is we say git add, and then the file name. And that tells to Git, tells Git, um, you should start knowing about this, uh, and also you should put the file in the cache, or the staging area, which I will talk about in a minute. So, um, if we ask git what the status is now, if we ask what's going on, we type git status again, 
uh, what Git says has changed. So previously it said untracked files, now it says changes to be committed. And uh, and there's one file listed in there as a new file, which is northern.txt. So it's important to understand when you're using Git um, that there are different places where your code can be. So when you first make a change or when you first create a file, uh, your change is in your working tree or your working directory uh, and not anywhere else. When you do a git add, what that does is it tells git um, to copy the changes you've made in your working tree into this thing called the index or the cache or the staging area. So the index and the cache and the staging area, they're all the same thing. Um, and that what they are is a place where um, you've got changes that git knows about but are not yet in the history of um, changes that, that git preserves forever. So really you can think of it as a place where you can work on uh, changes that you are going to tell git about. So what git's saying here is changes to be committed. So what that means is if you say git commit now um, it will take everything that's in this staging area uh, and you'll add a message saying what you did and it will move that into the real history and it'll say um, that will be available to other people if um, if you make it available and if you look back through history it'll be there as the latest thing that happened so the staging area is a place where you um, you get things ready to be put into history so what we've done is um, created a new file and we've told git uh, get this ready uh, to be committed by putting it in the staging area. So we do a git commit and what that does is it opens up your favorite text editor or your pre-configured text editor um, with a file a file name that you don't care about all you have to do is change the file and then save it and exit and git will use that as uh, the message that it, uh, it adds the commit message or the message that describes the change you made. So um, uh, there's a whole load of uh, stuff which I've shown in black, which is basically um, information that Git's giving you. Git doesn't actually use that as part of your message. It just um, uh, it's just in the in the text editor so that you can look at it um, while you're writing your change description to see what you've changed. And then the bit that's that I've shown in red won't show in red in your editor, but the bit that I've shown in red um, is your actual description of what you've done. So here I've typed first commit started with some northern. Once I exit from that text editor, uh, then git, git commit will respond by telling us some more information that we don't need to worry about for now. Um, but you'll notice that it prints out the message we gave. Uh, and then if we do a git status, uh, then it says nothing to commit, working directory clean. So um, there's no changes uh, anymore that are not already um, in history uh, tracked by git. We haven't made any changes since the last time we committed. Okay, so we've added a file. We've started off a project, we've added a file, so now we're going to need to change some stuff, right? The first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a new file called southern.txt and we're going to put some uh, southern style uh, sayings into it. So just uh, we're just creating a file there. And we're also going to modify uh, northern.txt, add another saying in the middle there. So the first thing to do is, uh, whenever we've done anything and we want to find out what's happened, we ask git what's going on. So git status. And what it says is, um, changes not staged for commit. Uh, and there's one file in that list, which is northern.txt. And also untracked files, uh, which is southern.txt. So what that's saying is, I do know about the file northern.txt, but there are changes in that file um, that I don't know about. And also, there's a file that I don't know about, a new file that's appeared, called southern.txt. So that's all, or everything you've done, basically, git tells you. So this git status command is very useful for finding, remembering what on earth it was you were doing. So, we can ask git what changed, so we can do git diff northern.txt, and it will show us the change we've made. And there you can see, we've added one saying in the middle there. Um, if you don't know how to read a diff, basically you can ignore everything until you get near the bottom. And near the bottom, you've got the um, the two sayings that are unchanged, shown there, um, uh, with a, a space at the beginning of a line to say, this is just a bit of context for you to understand where you are. And then the stuff that's actually changed is the line that starts with a plus. So, e by gum has uh, 
has been added. That's why there's a plus next to it. So that's the output of git diff um, it is a diff, uh, which you will get used to reading, and it's very useful when you got used to it. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to tell git about the stuff we did. So first of all, let's tell git about our new file that we've added. So we say git add southern.txt. And we're going to do a git status um, just to try and understand what's going on. So it says changes to be committed southern.txt and then changes not staged for commit northern.txt. So what that means is southern.txt has been moved into the index or the cache or the staging area. Um, or not move, sorry, copy, but you know, it, um, git now knows about it and it, and, uh, the version of southern.txt that we have in our working directory is now also in this staging area. Um, but what it's saying about northern.txt is, um, you've got changes to northern.txt that are not in the staging area, they're only in your working directory. So you've made changes but you haven't yet told git, um, about it. So the way that we tell git that we've made changes to northern.txt is exactly the same way we tell it we've made a new file. So Git doesn't really um, care much about the difference between creating a new file and modifying a file. All it wants to know is um, what stuff do you want to put into the next commit. Uh, if you want to put uh, these changes or this new file into the next commit then you do git add and give the file name. So what we're saying is, so this is going to be the most confusing thing for you uh, using Git, if, especially if you're used to using other version control systems. Um, Git has this staging area uh, in between the working tree and the real history. Um, it's really, really useful. Um, and I will hopefully, in some videos, show you some of the ways it is really useful. Um, but, but what it means is that when you've made a change, you need to do a git add to move that change or copy that change into the staging area. So, now we've told Git about southern.txt's uh, this new file and about northern.txt, which we've changed. When we say git status, it says changes to be committed. So that's telling you what is in the staging area. What's in the staging area now is northern.txt and southern.txt. And there are no changes in our working tree after stuff that we've added to the staging area. So there's no other output uh, listed. It's just telling us I've got uh, changes to two files that are going to be committed when you do a git commit. So let's do a git commit. Uh, so we type in git commit and we type in a message which is we add it is added some southern and a new northern uh, Save that file and git will print out some stuff saying I've done that commit And when we say git status now, it'll say you haven't done anything Okay, so that was how we make some changes and um, Put them into git's history. So next thing we, we might well want to do um, is find out what uh, what we did in the past uh, and hopefully why um, by looking back uh, into the history uh, of the changes. So uh, the, com the basic command for finding out um, what happened in the past is git log. So you just type git and then log and you can see uh, that there are two commits being described here. So the first line where it says commit and then a whole load of numbers and letters um, that's the unique identifier for this uh, change that you've made. So the change that you made is this one which you described as added some southern and a new northern. Well the way git identifies that uniquely is with this very long number uh, which uh, pretty much uniquely in the world identifies that change in that repository. Um, uh, what this means is if loads of people are working on um, the same pieces of code in different places there's no way um, Git will confuse your change with their change because it will have a different number here. Uh, that's an SHA1 hash of a load of stuff um, that, um, if you're interested. So the, the log will also tell you the author, which is me, um, and uh, the date that the change was made. Um, so you can see there are two changes. There's the first thing we did at the bottom, uh, and then the second thing we did uh, afterwards, so it's a bit like a blog, it goes upwards. So what we might want to do is um, uh, find out exactly what we did in one of these commits. So the way we do that is we say git show, and then we type uh, the first few characters of that commit ID. Um, so we've only typed DE27, that was enough for git to know what we're talking about. Uh, you basically have to type enough so that git uh, only has one change that starts with those letters and numbers. Um, 
and then Git will be fine with it. So you could have typed the whole lot. We could have typed Git show DE27 EDC0 blah 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 blah, which you might want to paste in. That would be fine. Um, but if you're typing it manually, you only need the first you know, four or six characters normally for Git to know what you're talking about. So we say git show, and it tells us again who did it, what the date was, what the commit message was, um, but it also shows you a diff showing you the changes that were made. So here we can see uh, northern.txt was created, so uh, there's a load of pluses because all the lines in northern.txt were added because there was no file beforehand. Um, and that, so git will do a diff of everything that happened um, as part of that change. In this case we only changed one file created one file. Okay, so that's how you go back um, and look at what happened um, and that diff will show you all the different uh, stuff that happened in all the files that you changed. Um, but now let's look at one of the real killer features, one of the things I love when I'm working with Git. Um, it's really nice to use and that is called stash. And It's all about interrupting what you're doing to do something else. So, let's imagine we're just doing our, our normal work um, we edit southern.txt and we add a whole load of um, uh, phrases at the end of southern.txt. This uh, this code's not ready to um, uh, check in yet. It's just something that we're working on. And then suddenly uh, an urgent customer issue pops up. Well, what do you do whenever you want to know what's going on? You type git status just to remember what you were doing. Um, and what we're doing is um, we've got one set of changes not staged for commit in southern.txt, so we've got our working tree has got some changes in that we haven't yet put into the staging area. Um, we want to forget about that stuff for now. Um, that's uh, that's not relevant to the customer issue. We've just got to get it out of the way. So Git has this brilliant command for just getting it out of the way. It's called git stash. So you type git stash and it just puts it somewhere you don't care where. It's just not in your way anymore. Um, it it, uh, it just sticks it somewhere and now if you say git status um, it says nothing to commit so you're back to a completely clean working environment uh, based on the code you, were, you had before you started making those changes so now you're free to fix this customer bug um, and then go back to what you were doing so let's make the fix um, we've got to fix some of the spelling in southern.txt so edit southern.txt uh, make the change that you um, you need to make, and then we can check it in. So the way we check it in uh, is we say we use git add. You can give a directory to git add. So what I've done here is I've said git add dot, which means git add the current directory. And what that does is uh, looks for everything you've changed in your working tree in this directory, and adds it to to this the staging area, puts it into the staging area. So it's a quick way of just saying everything in this directory. And then I've done a quick way of committing as well, which is instead of just typing git commit and then having a text editor open up, I've said git, <coughs> excuse me, I've, I've said git commit minus m, and I've given the uh, description of my change right there on the command line, and git uh, committed it quite happily, um, right there and then. So um, we fi we finished with our customer, but what we want to do is go back to what we were doing before. So let's have a look at what we've stashed. So we can stash all kinds of things, and a stash is like a mini branch. So it, it, it Git remembers uh, where you were before you stashed, and that helps it merge stuff back in when you want it to. So we're going to say git stash list, which tells us um, everything that we've stashed. So in our case, we've only stashed one thing. And the message here uh, that it shows you is a little bit confusing, because it's not a message that you supplied to say you were stashing, it's the last message before you stash, because we didn't supply a message, did we? So we just said git stash. So what Git's saying is um, you've got some changes that are on top of this change, which is called added some southern and a new northern. Okay, so there's one thing stashed. So all we want to do is um, unstash it. So the way you unstash the latest thing you stashed is you say git stash pop, because uh, it's like a stack, um, if that makes any sense to you. Basically, the last thing you stashed um, you can get back by saying git stash pop and what it does is it takes the changes that you were working on in southern.txt um, and it uh, reapplies them to the current uh, code and now obviously the current code has changed because southern.txt was part of that bug fix that we made um, but fortunately for us git just knows how to deal with that and it deals with it in this case it deals with it brilliantly sometimes you'll have to do manual merging 
um, if if git can't work out how the two changes fit together. But in this case, we just say git stash pop, uh, and it says yes, I've done it. And we can ask it what southern.txt looks like now. And if we if we do that by doing git diff southern.txt, what we can see is that our spelling correction uh, for core blimey uh, it is included, which was our customer fix. But also the changes we were working on before that have also gone in. So Git has just happily merged those changes together um, and is ready for us to carry on working on the changes we were working on before as if nothing happened. Uh, and that's one of the real killer features of Git. I love that. Uh, it works so well in practice uh, and it just means you can just say, forget what I was doing, do something else. Okay. Um, uh, and that's it for today. Hopefully um, we'll have more videos on how to do branching, how to work with other people using Git, um, how to do cool stuff like only check in part of my changes to a file. Uh, there's so much good stuff. Um, hopefully I'll do some more on it. Um, if you want to uh, um, subscribe to the videos on YouTube, go to the um, YouTube URL. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, find out about new uh, blog posts and videos. Um, you can go and look at the blog there on artificialworlds.net. Uh, you can look at various open source projects and stuff um, general fiddling around that I've done on artificialworlds.net and uh, thanks for watching.